Back in 2009, a video by the Australian comedy group Axis of Awesome went viral. It rightfully and quite elegantly demonstrated the ubiquity of the so-called four chord song. Segwaying and overlaying seemingly endless tunes sharing the same chord progression. They are not wrong. A 2017 paper by Mark Richards in Music Theory Online show that these four chords in Billboard's Hot 100 Singles charts from 1990 to 2016 appeared in over 5% of the 2,715 songs. That's 146 successful tunes which featured this progression. The origins of this four chord song go back at least as far as 1980 with Journeys Any Way You Want It. But why is this chord progression so popular? And what can we learn from it as musicians? Well, let's start with the chords themselves. In the key of C, they are C, G, A minor, and F. First of all, these are all diatonic. They come from just one scale, in this case, C major. They appear at these positions in the scale, 1, 5, 6 minor, and 4. Using these Roman numerals, we can generalize to any key, but we'll just imagine everything in C major here. Not all chords in the same key are created equally, and they can be seen as having different levels of stability. Part of this stability or instability is whether they contain the F and B, which due to the position in the scale have a gravitational pull down and up respectively. Some perspectives of harmony place these four chords in the following three groups. Tonic groups, which can be considered stable, C major and its moodier sibling, A minor. The subdominant, less stable category, which has F major. And the dominant, least stable category, which has G major, which has a leading tone and the dominant in the root. I should say that this, though very useful in some cases, is a highly contextual perspective and no one theory is gospel or universally applicable but this is common enough to warrant discussion. So these four chords have a satisfying completeness. They give us two flavors of tonic and two levels of tension. In fact, these four chords have been used in this order in pop for decades. But as a loop, it was really popular in the 1950s and 60s. Tunes like Earth Angel or Stand By Me and many others. And there are of course later examples seems to keep coming back, coloured with maybe some harmonic extensions and stylistic context, but essentially the same. So this 1645 loop persists, but with nothing like the popularity of the four chord song. Why is this? I suggest that if you look at the curve of stability in this loop, it's essentially a ramp from tonic to subdominant to dominant and then a fall back down in a sort of sawtooth pattern. This 5-1 cadence, also known as the so-called perfect cadence, is very insistent and final, and it sort of fell out of fashion in pop music, particularly with the influence of blues, soul and gospel, where the plagal cadence is 4-1, no longer an adjunct to tonal harmony, but a core cadence in its own right. There's nothing wrong with a 5-1. In fact, it forms the backbone of whole genres of beautiful music. There's something very direct, obvious and gold-based about it. Since the 1960s, there's been a softening of this 5-1 cadence to the plagal 4-1. It has something a little softer, warmer and more soulful about it. So let's look at 1645. It has one perfect cadence, but no plagal cadences at all. But if we just rearrange this loop slightly, putting the five after the one chord, we get a plagal cadence from the F to the C and another one from C to G. Not only that, but this loop creates this lovely deceptive Aeolian cadence from G to A minor, lessening the centrality of the C. And also this beautiful A minor to F move. It's called a lighten vacial, by the way, or L in near Riemannian theory. Story for another time. So now the whole sequence is more open, 
with softer cadences and can tolerate looping to a more contemporary ear. This is what Richards calls the axis progression, named after the comedy band, but also, as you'll see, its circular properties. So we have this satisfying loop that has variety, but soft cadences and a sort of openness. And yes, there are many examples of it starting here on the one chord. But you may ask yourself, if these connections are so effective, why do we need to start on the one or any chord? The answer is, you don't. In fact, of those 2,715 Billboard tunes, less than half of them had this loop starting on the one chord. Almost as many started on the six chord. While it makes sense to have these two tonic poles as starting positions, sort of a major and minor version of the axis, there are examples of the progression starting on every point, pulling more flavour from this loop. You can think of them as modes of the progression. So yes, you can superimpose tunes on the classic four chord song, but we can go further and superimpose any of the variations, turning the much derided loop into a scintillating kaleidoscope of musical possibility. Thank you.